Developing tonight, the Washington State High School football coach who prays with coaches and players on the 50-yard line has been booted from the program. Joe Kennedy is on paid administrative leave as of today, but he already has lawyers from the Liberty Institute on his side, and they're getting ready to sue. They're telling me that, you know, oh, well, we'll give you a closet to go hide in, and it's like... I'm an American citizen, I'm a taxpayer, and this is my community. My kids go to that school, and you're telling me I can't do this? We brought in our legal power panel to break this down. Lawrence Walters is an attorney, as well as Whitney Bone. Thank you guys both for coming in. Uh, Lawrence, we start with you. Where do his rights as a private citizen end and the rights of the school to be a religious free zone, a public place, begin? All right, so any of these uh, school prayer cases always involve a balancing between the right of free expression under the First Amendment and the uh, separation of church and state, which is also required under the First Amendment. And the courts you know, look at various tests and so forth, but really what they're going to focus on is, is, is this private speech? Is this person engaging in private speech where he's not requiring anybody else to join in or coercing any of the other players to participate in the prayer? And if that's the case, then it could well be protected under the right of free expression and he may very well be allowed to engage in private speech on his own. But is Private Whitney getting down on one knee in front of perhaps um, a stadium full or at the very least a room full of your players? Is that private? Absolutely not. And I mean, I think the distinction here is that this man, Coach Kennedy, yard line at games. It's not he's not in the end zone. He's not on the 25 yard line. He's on the 50 yard line. And it's at a public school function where he is an agent of that public school on public school property. And it's inappropriate because it crosses that boundary where it gives the perception of we're endorsing this as a public school. And that's just not something that these public schools can afford to have happen because it violates the law as it, re as it relates to church, separation of church and state. I don't think that he has any interest here here in terms of saying that this was private speech or private exercise of religion when you're standing on the 50-yard line mm -hmm. bent on one knee. Right. I and, think you give that up then. And Larry, they did give him the option to uh, continue to engage, as, as Whitney said, in a, in a personal moment. But when he uh, refused or appeared to refuse to uh, uh, con conduct himself in that manner, that's when they decided that they're, gonna, that they're going to at least put him on leave while they investigate. Right. Well, look, it, it's a close case. I don't think it's, a, it's an easy case for either side, uh, but the, the incidences where school prayer has been stopped or enjoined by the courts have involved, you know, the prayer over a megaphone where everything stops, an invocation occurs, there's a formal policy of having prayer right. at a particular event. I've not seen the courts stop prayer by one individual uh, of his own volition, even on school grounds. So I think this is going to be a pretty close case uh, involving his free expression rights. Whitney, as a final question, just because we're running out of time, you're going to hear a lot of people People complain that um, why is God, why is morality being taken out of um, our, our public schools? Yes, it is a public venue, of course. Um, it not everyone adheres to that particular religion, but you get a lot of backlash when you have cases like this because people say he's just trying to be a good person. Well, and that's and that's great, but the whole premise here is that he's an agent of a public school, and in as much he's an employee. And when we're all employees of our employers, we don't get to just do whatever we want. Unfortunately, his actions are at least subject to being perceived as representative of his employer, who is a governmental agency because they're a public school district. And in there, that lies the problem. This isn't someone praying on their own. This is someone acting in their capacity as an agent of the government. And it violates the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment. Well, we appreciate you guys coming in for the debate. Lawrence Walters and Whitney Bone, thank you both so much. My pleasure.